This weekend vlog is not starting as planned. My goal was to get up this morning and go do something exciting. Instead, instead I had to get our Hagwon bus to the mechanic because the brakes were acting up. They started screeching last night. And so this morning I had to get in there before 11 because it's Saturday and the shop is open until noon. And since I was uh, already up and running and taking care of the van, I decided to go clean it up because I haven't washed that damn thing in about three years time. Well, no, I, I went through a um, auto car wash, automatic car wash once or twice before. Um, but that thing never cleans the car properly. There's always smudges left behind. So today I decided to go down to a manual car wash, which I did and uh, scrubbed the heck out of it. The only thing that's missing is a good wax on wax off job. For the most part, the van is pretty shiny right now. Right now it's 2.30, half a day is gone. I haven't eaten anything. I'm filling my belly with these pork jerky thingies, which are good, but certainly not filling and I sustained myself on a slice of cheesecake that was left over for my birthday, which was given to me by my lovely wife, and a cold cup of coffee. So the plan is to head out somewhere and get some lunch, or early dinner, I guess. Let's go see what the fam is doing. <laughs> something anything samgyeopsal it's three o'clock how about going somewhere man it's such a nice day it's warm yeah somewhere a few years back i picked up a couple of remote controlled cars from ali and liam a couple of years ago the batteries died and these are 3.7 volt batteries um these cars are quite fast. They reach up to 25 to 30 or 45 kilometers an hour. So they're speedy. So the batteries required are quite high voltage. So each battery is 3.7 volt, which together adds up to about 7.4 volts. Uh, a regular AA battery is 1.2 volt, I believe. So this is the equivalent of like uh, six, six AA batteries. That's why these cars are so speedy. Uh, I was unsuccessful in getting uh, some rechargeable batteries here in Korea. I even stopped by at a um, at a gizmo shop and they had no 3.7 volt batteries which surprised me. They use different kinds. These particular cars, I picked them up um, online. They were shipped from China and they only require two um, AA batteries on each side but each one is 3.7 volts which means that they're not easily obtainable I think because uh, I think most batteries that are used for um, uh, high-powered cars um, come in a package kind of where there's four of them in one little pack together and there's one plug and that's what you use for the car. But these cars only require two, like this, 3.7 volt each. Uh, last time I ordered a pack of, I think, 16, but I ordered the wrong batteries. Uh, these batteries are flat. They're flat on one side and then flat on the other side. And using a, I don't know what it's called, a smelt, maybe. I, I added, I added some, um, some copper wire. I, I smelted some copper wire on top of it to add that little divot to to make the batteries usable, <laughs> like any other regular. AA battery. Uh, it's been semi-successful. I managed to get one of the cars going. Um, the other set of batteries is charging right now as we speak, right here. Uh, I hope that it works. I'm not sure if it's the batteries or if it's the car that's having a problem. So I managed to get one running. The kids are playing with it now and hopefully this one will work as well. But before I do, I have to take off the wheels and clean a little bit on the inside. So that's my Saturday project. I love these cars, these are really cool. Any adult that enjoys playing with remote controlled cars would love this. 
I totally love this. I bought it for my kids, but anytime we get to go outside onto a flat surface, man, these guys go. Vroom. What's even cooler about this purchase, I just noticed it, that the manual lays out exactly every single individual part. So any, um, any person, any hobbyist would love this, I think, because you could totally order your own separate parts and basically build your own, like there's three pages of detailed um, items. Everything that's, that's uh, used to build this model is listed on here. One thing I learned, <clears throat> these gun-like gun uh, remote controls, I find these to be a lot better, especially for children. Um, some of the cheaper models have like, um, it'll be a handheld device with arrows. There will be like arrows left, right, or left, right, up and down, and then uh, a, a little forward and backwards button. These buttons I find to be very annoying and not very good. Um, I find this to be a lot better um, for acceleration um, forward and backwards, and then you've got the steering. It's a lot easier to manage, even for children. My, my kid used to do it this way. Liam is left-handed, so he would go like this. <laughs> but regardless, um, for younger kids, a kid can simply push the button and it goes. You know, uh, This they can mess around with. But with the buttons, it's very difficult for them to, um, especially for the little ones, it's difficult for them to figure it out. So they'll have like one button just pressed on either left or right without really doing much. This they can just kind of play around with, you know, and the car goes. If you have a little kid you want to buy a remote control cars, car for, um, go with one of these. Don't go with those buttony things. Those are just annoying. All right, things are beginning to happen. I've been sent on an errand. But first, I got to take the garbage down. <laughs> So it's out the door, up the alley, and to the left. The assignment is to get a bucket of ice cream, four cans of beer, and snacks. Apparently I've been given free reign as to what kind of snacks to buy. In the news in Korea, Super Weguk has been busted for drug abuse. Shocking. The most beloved Westerner has been busted for using methamphetamines. Metampeta metamp meta drugs. Accusations of homosexuality are also flying around. Hard to say what caused it, what's happening. But it doesn't bode well for all the rest of us here. Okay. Ice cream. Do they even have buckets of ice cream here? <laughs> Mission accomplished. Bag full of junk. I'm gonna get into some hot water for the ice cream because it's a lot smaller than the one that was requested and a lot more expensive. But it is a lot better. And they didn't have the other kind, so whatever. But it's turning out to be a pretty uneventful Saturday. Molly's friends came over. Well, Molly's and Liam's friends came over. And I guess we're gonna be staying at home. Which is okay. Nothing wrong with it. And just like that, this weekend has become a very eventful one. A lot of things happening. So many, uh, I can hardly wrap my head around everything. But it is Sunday. Uh, we made it out of the house finally. We stayed at home all Saturday. We finally made it out into the mountain today. Into, onto Munsu Mountain. And uh, we're gonna go drive down to the beach and have some, and have some sushi. But changed our minds because the car got very very full and we thought it would be a bit uncomfortable for people to be squashed in the back so we ended up coming going a little bit closer to home and we'll have some duck instead so if you've never had duck you'll get to see how duck is consumed in South Korea just got the news from from my uh, podcast partner David who decided to pull out of the podcast. Um, 
for one reason or another. So that's very disappointing. And I, on the other hand, I plan to continue with the podcast, but I need to figure out the direction. I think I need to make a strategic plan for the future of that podcast, whether to keep it at the Hagwon Startup, maintain the name, um, or to change it into something more Korea friendly. I don't know. Things to think about. Maybe I shouldn't do it on an empty stomach. Countryside is nice. That's the restaurant we're gonna eat. Just over that little wall. Right there. Some restaurants in Korea, not all, but some, have like these little bungalow setups. So instead of going and sitting in the main building, you can just sit out in one of these bungalows. It's like a private little room and uh, have your meal in there, which is really cool. Uh, there is a bunch of them throughout the country, uh, mostly by the coast, but uh, every now and then you'll find them inland. Um, and they're really cool because if you've got kids, you can, you know, kind of riot around inside undisturbed or without disturbing others around you. The duck has arrived. There's duck, there's salad, there's a bunch of side dishes. I'm so hungry. This here is makgeolli, which is a traditional Korean rice wine. Uh, and if you can see at the bottom, there is some residue here, and there is some clear water. Normal people shake the shit out of it and then consume it mixed. My wife discovered a different way of drinking it by not shaking it, and apparently tastes better. I used to drink it, but I quit drinking altogether about four years ago, and I just admire the labels. Is it supposed to be good, Gio? Hey, what? This is made in Ulsan? Mm. Okay, this is an Ulsan brand, so it's supposed to be yeah. very good. Man, I spent way too much time from the computer, my eyesight is going bad. So it's like a uh, really strong beer, 5.5% alcohol. <laughs> a bit of extra bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. It's 6.30, we finished our meal, and I guess we're gonna head out home, or at least head out home. I have been receiving a lot of notifications from YouTube, suggestions or uh, recommendations for, for YouTubers based in South Korea, which is surprising because when I started my channel, um, all the searches that I did revealed very few YouTubers. There were a couple who were very big, but uh, recently YouTube seems to be directing a lot more um, YouTubers with a lot more subscribers. The ones I just noticed today were by two girls. One of them I think may be American uh, with a large number of subscribers. I think she had about 12,000 or so. And there were... In my pocket. Thank you. On there! <laughs> And the other two I just found were two young women, uh, Julie Kim and Sissy Kim, or something like that, I don't know. They're two Kims. Uh, and they had somewhere in the neighborhood of 94,000 subscribers. They record their videos inside apartments, I guess, uh, sitting down, so they're very kind of chatty uh, videos. Um, and they're young people, so they talk about dating and drinking and stuff like that. And these are exactly the things that I don't talk about. And so I was thinking, what does my channel have to offer that is different from these particular ones that are re reporting on South Korea already? 
and uh, honestly, I don't know. First of all, I guess the content that I cover is probably catered towards older and older audience, um, possibly. Uh, I try to do a lot more travel videos uh, and showing you the country rather than talking about, you know, the things that people do when they date because that's past me. I don't date anymore. So yeah, I don't know the niche that I have. It's a uh, older generation uh, people living in South Korea with families, um, children and dealing with the day-to-day -day struggles of families, expat families and expat dads living in South Korea. Um, the niche that I target uh, is business oriented people who would like to start a business in South Korea with which I can help you. Uh, in particular, well actually exclusively the business that I can help you start with is a um, English language school, a hog one. <clears throat> because that's what I operate, uh, it's a franchise and so I can help you out with that. Uh, if you're interested, hit me up. There's too many bombs striking me this week. One of our interviewers pulled out for this Monday episode. And then right after that, David pulled out from this Monday's episode. So this Monday's uh, Hug One Starter episode will be just me. And trying to figure out uh, the direction that I want to take this channel into. And as well, the direction that I want to take the Monday podcast into. I don't know where all of this will go, but I'll figure it out. For now, it is what it is. When I am personally faced with a crisis of this magnitude, when people abandon me, my brain kicks into overdrive and I start scheming and planning as soon as it hits me. So I already have a couple of ideas. Check out the sky, by the way. Very nice. I have a couple of ideas already that I that I could potentially take the Monday podcast into. And being on my own might actually give me a little bit more freedom in what to do. Uh, I always thought that YouTubers who are on their own do have a lot more freedom to do whatever they want to do because um, they don't have to rely on other people. They don't need to you know, wait and, and kind of make others happy. You do what it is that you want to do um, at any given moment, which allows for a lot more adventure and, uh, you know, gives you a lot more freedom overall. I take things in stride and don't let myself get beat up over, over setbacks. These may or may not be the remains of some artifacts that were dug up here from ancient civilizations who ruled the Korean hills. I don't know, they're nicely laid out here for display. There's a sign here that says something about the Ulsan Museum, but I'm not sure if that's any good because apparently it's been left into, uh, driven into decrepitude. I guess the Ulsan Museum doesn't care enough to take these back into, into its museum. This is just a fabulous scheme to secure some prime property keep it for longer until the value of the land rises and then sell it for inflated prices that's pretty much what happened to this village this was just a village we used to drive up and down these these roads here that were actually non-existent this was a dirt road uh, this place developed over the past decade further down the hill on the way back home there's a little neighborhood that's been developed over the past decade as well this discovery here the architectural discovery that nobody really seems to care about much and leaves the artifact just sitting outside covered in grass and dirt I'm not sure how valuable those things actually are <laughs> anyway I think I'm gonna leave it at that people think adventure is just around a corner but in reality life is the same wherever you go. Adults get busy with work and family and it just, it could be the most beautiful place in the world. But if you got work to do, you just have to do it. It doesn't matter. As always, remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment in the section below. If you have any ideas on where to go with the podcast, where you would like to see it go, 
Like I said, I've got a couple of ideas, but I uh, will have to see if they're workable into my schedule, which is already jam-packed with everything else that's happening. But I'd like to see some feedback. Catch you later!